Okie dokie. Let's talk a little bit about some headlines from across the state. Uh, we're going to start with the news that came down last week about the about UIL realignment. Believe it or not, UIL realignment is come is still happening. Um, kind of, sort of. Mm-hmm. You may remember when we had Dr. Susan Elza, the UIL athletic director, on. Uh, she talked about how realignment comes out, but that's not the end of it. Right. There is a, a they have a robust appeals process that if you really feel like you can make a case that you should be in a different district, then you can go and make that a case. Three such teams did make that case, and they got swatted a half court. Farmersville, um, Grapeland, and Alamo Heights all wanted to move districts. Um, the they were basically moving. I won't bore you with the numbers, but they wanted to move from District Five, to District Six, District Eleven, to District Twelve, District thir- Fourteen, District Thirteen. Didn't want to change regions; just wanted to change districts. Mm-hmm. Uh, the UIL has denied all three of those, um, all three of those requests, all three of those appeals. Those so now you can say realignment is done, mm-hmm. done and dusted. It was done and dusted as of last week. Uh, what we have is what we'll get. For is the next three a normal number? Do you know? I think we asked her about that, but I can't. It was usually, you know, just, say a, just a couple. I would say that's relatively low. Yeah. Um, I would say that it probably tops out at about eight or nine. Nine, yeah. Um, and then it probably, you know, three is probably on the low end of average, mm-hmm. but it still kind of falls within that range. Oh, well, that's got to feel good for the UIL. And the UIL looked it up and said, no, thank you. You can stay right there. Coaching news from across the state. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a state champion head coach on the way, or on the move, rather, another one, uh, and that is uh, – B.J. Gott. B.J. Gott is the head coach at Pe- Katie Pato, or mm-hmm. at least was. Uh, he is now moving over to take over as the head coach at Pearland. Pearland, of course, is uh, looking for a uh, coach after Brian uh, Ricky Tullis took the job at Brian. Mm-hmm. Not Brian Tullis took the job at Ricky. Ricky Tullis took the job <laughs> at Brian. Uh, and so B.J. Gott is on the move, uh, leaving Pearland, or uh, re- leaving, rather, Katie Pato, the program that he led to the 5A Division One state championship the past mm-hmm. uh, week or past year. They also, you remember, he was the, he opened the school yep. back in, in Katy back in 2017. Uh, it all culminated uh, three straight winning seasons, including last, uh, you, you may remember last year in 2020, they had their season cut short due to a COVID outbreak. They had to forfeit their playoff game. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did not have to do that this year. They ran all the way to the 2021 5A Division One state championship game. They are moving up to Class 6A. Uh, BJ Gott is also moving up to Class 6A, but he'll be moving there with Pearland as he is taking the job there at Pearland. Uh, hi. Uh, wh- I think that's a little bit interesting because he is a Katie guy, mm-hmm. and I would, I would think that – I don't think Gary Joseph's going anywhere. No. But you would have to think that he's on the short list of guys who would be uh, if up and, next, if and yeah. when Coach Joseph decided that he was done, um, he would be on that short list. But he is going to take the job at Pearland, at least for now. So that is certainly noteworthy. Pearland or Katie Pato, another good job looking for a head. Coach. We had a really good conversation with him when you were on uh, paternity leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a good dude. Mm-hmm. Good, good dude. Copper's Cove has made a hire. Yeah. Uh, Copper's Cove, and, and what I think is a little bit of a surprise, they've, yeah. and they've hired uh, WT White coach uh, Tony Johnson out of Dallas ISD uh, at Kickslide on Twitter. <laughs> um, he is uh, replacing Jason Hammett. Uh, Jason Hammett uh, was, uh, had back-to-back one in nine seasons. Um, but Coach Johnson's done a fantastic job. He he helped get WT White, which has been one of the long struggling programs in Dallas ISD, got them to the playoffs for the first time since 2007 in 2020, uh, and then they went six and five again this year, which is six and five at, at Dallas uh, WT White is pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. So uh, WT White looking for a coach after Tony Johnson leaving for Copper. So Cove. talk about a guy that'll bring a good amount of energy to your yeah. f- to your revamp your program energy. that's in need of a revamp. We're gonna talk a little bit to, to a coach who had an interim tag removed later. In the program let's talk about another one uh and that is in Mejia. uh aaron noel uh was the uh he was the head coach for the Mejia black cats uh last season in 2021 he served as their interim coach uh after brady bond uh you know uh he took over last year after brady bond left uh they have now after uh after you know pretty decent season there Mejia he is going to be he's going to take over in the full-time capacity Mejia has removed the interim tag uh from Aaron Noel uh so they have a new full-time head coach in Aaron Noel uh there at Mejia for the Black Cats their fourth head coach since 2019. Step is trying to convince him to send uh us some shirts that have that awesome Black Cat logo oh, on it. Oh I already it. got one. Oh well. Don't gotta worry about me. 
You don't worry about me. I got connections. <laughs> Uh, shout out Coach Brent Ratliff at Corgan Camden, too. I got his shirt, too. Uh, they say you can't come come home again. That is uh, patently false uh, because you can come home again, uh, such is the case in Cumby. Uh, the Cumby Trojans have made a hire, and it is a familiar name uh, down there in uh, at Cumby. They have hired Tom Dracos to be their uh, – Dracos, rather, to be their head coach at Cumby. Uh, you may remember – uh, that uh, this is it. He is coming from Texas Lutheran, I should say. Um, Texas Lutheran, he was their defensive line coach at the college uh, at the college level. But Tom Dracos is not a stranger to Cumby. In fact, he was their head coach from 2013 to 2019, uh, led him to their first district title in 38 years back in 2017. He goes off to the college ranks for a couple of years, decides to come back. Uh, he is taking over uh, a program. Uh, the Coach Charles Bowles uh, went uh, one and seven in 2021, two and five in 2020, and uh, eight and four in 2019. But Coach Tom Dracos is back at Cumbie, uh, taking over the position he once held. I uh, wonder if his chair is still there. Hmm. Let's find out. This is a couple weeks old, but we kind of bumped it last week. I want to make sure we talked about it. Uh, the TSWA, uh, Texas Sports Writers Association, uh, announced their all state teams. A couple of weeks back, uh, they come out pretty late because I think they because they wait until the end of the full season. The um, the other uh, all district teams uh, or all state teams do not uh, do that. The uh, in my opinion, the TSWA is the like the AP all state comes out. I believe you have to file at the end of the regular season. Mm-hmm. Um, the TSWA is in my opinion the gold standard for all state teams in the state of Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find them up on texasfootball.com, but if you are interested, the players of the year that they named. In 6A, it was Cade Klubnick on the offensive side. Uh, Ethan Burke, the defensive lineman from Westlake, on the defensive side, their coach of the year. Or rather, the, he shared it with Chris Ross, the defensive lineman from North Shore. Uh, their coach of the year was Todd Dodge. Uh, in 5A, offensive player of the year was Marquise Collins. Uh, their defensive player of the year was uh, Andon Thomas, the linebacker from Liberty Hill. Mm. Hard to argue with that. And uh, and uh, Coach Jason Todd from uh, South Oak Cliff was their Very 5A good. coach of the year. In 4A, 4A, their uh, their player of the year was Coy Aiken, the wide receiver yes. from Stephenville. Well deserved. Uh, Reese Young, the linebacker from Stephenville, was their defensive player of the year. And then Brian Bell from China Spring was their coach of the year. In 3A, Braden Bennett, the Mount Vernon quarterback, was their co- offensive player of the year. Uh, Joe Gutschel, the uh, defensive lineman from uh, Lorena, was their uh, defensive player of the year. And their coach was Mark Fannin at Franklin. In 2A, Dalton Brooks their def- uh, was from Shiner was their uh, offensive player of the year. Demar- Demarion Medlock, the linebacker from Mart, was their mm-hmm. defensive player of the year. Daniel Bedeker, the Shiner head coach, was their coach of the year. And the 1A ranks, uh, you can go to the, uh, the the 1A ranks, the Texas Sports Writers Association don't do them, but the Texas Six-Man Coaches Association puts out an outstanding, uh, uh, an outstanding rather, all-state team. And theirs comes out, theirs has been out for, for much longer. Theirs comes mm-hmm. out pretty quickly, uh, I think, because it's a little bit of a smaller area, you know, group. And so if you're interested, their player of the year in Division One. Uh, was uh, Cedric Ware from Westbrook. Yes. Uh, offensive MVP was Caden Hulk from May. Defensive MVP was Patton, uh, Patton Dominguez from Westbrook. Their coach of the year was Homer Matlock at Westbrook. And then the private, or rather in the 1A Division Two, Grayson Rigdon, the freshman mm-hmm. from Strawn, was their six-man player of the yeah, year. Yeah, we'll be hearing his name for a while. Their coach of the year was Shannon Waters at Benjamin. Uh, offensive player MVP was Lorenzo Garcia from Strawn. And their defensive MVP was Griff Rigdon from Strawn. Uh, so there you go. There is your uh, all state look at that. Did they list him as Hulkamania or not? Because if they didn't, that's a mess up on their part. No, they didn't. No. Oh, Finally, I wanted to kick this around for a little bit. Um, there is a uh, there's a story out from Dennis Dodd. Dennis Dodd from CBS uh, Sports. He has put out his annual story uh, about college football attendance. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just going to read the tweet from him. Uh, Inside college football's attendance crisis, attendance hits a 40-year low, down for the seventh straight season and nine of the last ten. The SEC has their lowest attendance since 1999. The ACC has their lowest in more than 30 years. The Pac-12 has their lowest ever. And then he writes, it's not just COVID and the convenience of 70-inch TVs. Um, and so if you dive into the story, it's a good piece. Uh, he, he talks about how they, uh, they the average attendance at games this year was 39,848. That is the lowest since 1981. Uh, it's also a significant fall off since 2019. 2020, obviously, 
there was almost nobody in the stands. Mm-hmm. But 2020, uh, 2019, uh, they had they were over 41,000, um, almost 41,500, down to 39,800. And you and I talked a little bit about this. Yeah. About why you think the uh, that attendance is down in college football. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a few different things. Yeah. One of them, uh, I think you can uh, associate some of it with the lingering, maybe maybe lingering, uh, uh, you know, hesitance of, of COVID. Right. A little bit of it. Yeah. Right? Maybe there's there a was a new thing. strand that came out yeah. right when we were in the middle of college football season. So, so it makes sense. At least part of it is that. Mm-hmm. I also think that the television product's really good, mm-hmm. and the television product is 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 pretty cheap. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, and that you can get a big TV. You, ha- you right. have a projector. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> well, and the other thing is too, and I brought this point up with the TV thing is not only like they don't just broadcast the really really big Alabama games or the really mm-hmm. big Texas A and M games. They broadcast everything if you, you want to watch, watch yeah if you want to watch even hawaii like you can turn yeah. on espn plus at whatever o'clock and they're on yes that's part of it so i also think that there are people who are maybe big college football fans who are like why would i go to one game if that game stinks then i'm stuck watching yeah if game. i can put on apple tv and have four screens going exactly right. why not there's that secondly and i do think this is worth mentioning i think it is pretty expensive mm-hmm. it's pretty expensive um, you know, it is, it's tickets, you know, tickets to get in. Yeah, of course it's going to cost more to go to Texas than it's going to cost to go to, uh, North Texas, Texas right? Yeah. To a North Texas game. But it's still expensive mm-hmm. because you're paying to park, you're paying to get in, uh, you're paying for food and drink and things like that. It's a, it's an outing. It's, mm-hmm. it's pretty expensive. Uh, that's one part of it. I have found in my, this is me and your mileage may vary. I don't necessarily know that college football is a family-friendly activity. I yep. think colleges are trying to make it that way. Mm-hmm. Some colleges are trying to make it that way. But I think that it's it's hard to bring a family there um, because it's kind of rowdy. You know? Well, yeah, it's, it's hard to party. bring a family with young kids. Like, it's different Absolutely. when my family goes like, to go my youngest brother or my brother's 18 years old. So we right. don't worry about hearing bad words, but you would because you've so, got young kids. Right. So like, for example, Hank wants to go to a football game. Mm-hmm. Hank is vi- now very excited that dad works in football mm-hmm. and it has not even crossed our mind to go to a college football game. Right. We, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the high school down the street and go to a JV game on a Thursday night. Mm-hmm. because it's cheap. Right. And we can leave whenever. Right. And then there's one other thing. And, and this is one thing that I think is the biggest factor for me. And one of the reasons that I don't attend a ton of college football games personally the games take too damn long (laughs) okay i looked this up it was a random game Mm -hmm. i just picked i was like all right north texas smu it's a random game okay it's 35 to 12 not i would say that's an average score yeah right it wasn't it wasn't clock stoppage all the time 47 points it's not some 80 you know it's not some 70 to 60 out right it's you know for uh 35 12 game lasted four hours Four hours. And that doesn't count the hour minimum that you're going to need to leave to get mm-hmm. there and the hour minimum it's going to take for you to get home. That's a six-hour day. Right. That's your whole day. If you're going to do go to a college football game, that's your day. And, and look, I get it that it's only, what, six or seven Saturdays a year. And for some people, that is their – that's what they want to do. Mm-hmm. But I just can't – I think there's a lot of people who can't justify spending an entire day out of college football. And this is something that baseball's often st- struggled with is time of game. Mm-hmm. One of the things I like about high school football, two and a half hours, you're done. Mm-hmm. It's over in two and a half hours, right? Uh, the NFL has got this thing down to about three hours. Yep. They have got it. That thing that thing moves. And I, think and I think that they looked at some of those situations and said, you know what, these games are taking too long. Well, high school would go even faster if we would get away with the 30-minute half times. Oh, well, mm-hmm. we need to give, we gotta give the fans <laughs> their shine to I'm just saying that, look, is college football going to die? No, it's not. Because nope. TV ratings are robust and things like that. But college football athletic, progr- athletic programs are kind of dependent on you showing up at their stadiums. Oh, yeah. And if these things are starting to dip and they're going to keep, keep dropping 1,000 people a year, mm-hmm. then at some point there does come a, po- a, a, a point where they cannot – they cannot Ex- do all the things they want. Especially for a G5 school. Yes. Like, I can I can say that from going to North Texas. You make most of your, your bang out of your buck off of the six football games that you host every year. Mm-hmm. And so it's even more imperative that people come to those six Saturdays because those are the six biggest Saturdays of your entire year. Mm-hmm. There you go. So, anyway, there's some headlines and uh, college football tenants uh, falling just a little bit. 
Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.